Hello everybody and welcome. My name is Austin James Jackson. In today's video, we're talking about the best Lightroom presets for landscape and nature photographers. These are four of my absolute favorite must have presets that you have to pick up if you are a landscape or nature photographer. They're going to help you bring your photography to the next level, whether this be by resizing, denoising, sharpening, or just some really great effects. These really do have it all, all of these uh, plugins, and I really, really like them. I've included links down below in the description where you can go and grab each and every one of these plugins. I do really think that they are helpful. Um, and as always, be on the lookout for sales. A lot of these plugins have sales a lot of the time. You can get them a little bit cheaper uh, if you don't need them right away. So we're going to go ahead and jump right into Lightroom. I'll show you how to open each and every one of these plugins and then how to use each one of them. Just a really short and sweet example. Hopefully this will be helpful for you guys and hopefully you enjoy. All right, guys, let's jump right over into Lightroom. Here we go. All right guys, so we're here in Lightroom. Now you can use these plugins at any point in time during your edit. Uh, a lot of them are really helpful at the beginning, whereas others are really helpful at the end of your edit. But uh, regardless, you can pretty much use any of them whenever you want. Now I've got four photos here that I'm gonna show four different examples of my four favorite Lightroom plugins here. Um, let's go ahead and start with this one here. Um, and I'm gonna be showing you a plugin called uh, Topaz Sharpen AI. Uh, uh, and that's a really cool sharpening, uh, basically plugin that's going to allow us to sharpen a photo. Now you may wonder why I want to sharpen a photo before I've edited it at all. This is really helpful when you've got a photo that might not be as sharp as you might want. So you, maybe you can see when I zoom in here, let me zoom out just a little bit. You can see the tree is not really in focus very well. It's kind of blurry. And when we scroll over here, uh, let's drop this down. We can make it a little bit larger. You can see the background is in focus, but not the tree. So I want to do a little bit of sharpening. So that is where this uh, Topaz Sharpen comes in handy. So to load that plugin, you're just going to control click or right click on your photo. Go to edit in. All your plugins should appear here. You can see these are a wide variety of ones that I've tried. I'm just showing you a couple of the nice ones. And then I would use Topaz Sharpen AI. You're going to click that and a dialog box here will load. This gives me the choice to edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments, edit a copy or edit original. Basically what this means is editing the original would edit the original file, editing a copy would edit a copy of the file, and then editing a copy with Lightroom adjustments would edit a copy of the file with the Lightroom adjustments taken. So if you've made any edits on it, you want to edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. These are the settings that I use. Just go ahead and hit edit um, and then it will load over and then it will actually create a second copy like you can see here. I have two copies now um, and the copy will be what the photos are or what the adjustment rather is applied on. So I'm going to go over into Topaz Sharpen AI, which is right here, and I've already got it loaded out. So once your photo loads into Topaz Sharpen, uh, it's going to look like this. You're going to have like a split screen. This is pretty much exactly what you're going to be looking at now. Uh, you can click and drag around, um, but when I'm on the center of the photo, I actually think it's looking just fine. When you move around, it will cause it to re-render. I'll show you guys here. You can see now it has to re-render. Um, but you want to go to a spot on your photo that you want to see a nice before and after. Uh, if you aren't already, I like to be in this split view here. This allows you to move the slider back and forth to make some adjustments. Um, and you guys may have seen my video covering Topaz uh, Sharpen AI. I've covered in a couple of the YouTube videos, but this is kind of just a more compact uh, video that I can show you a bunch of great plugins all in one video. So the way that this works um, is you can go up to the sharpen model and I like to check this little lightning rod here, which means that it automatically is going to use the recommended model for this image. So the AI software is going to detect what your problem is in the image. It's going to go ahead and choose the AI model that it thinks will work best and, and then it's just going to go ahead and apply the adjustment. On this photo, uh, I believe it did a pretty good job. We're just waiting for it to load out. There it is. Now you can see. We've added the detail back into that tree. The tree is a lot sharper. So are the leaves. Now, if we wanted to make some adjustments, we could use these things here. But uh, honestly, most of the time, you can just check these boxes to automatically uh, apply. And it will do a really, really nice job. Uh, once you're done, you can just go ahead and hit apply. It'll take a second, and then it will load right back into Lightroom. Now the next plugin that I really like is called Luminar Neo. This one has a couple cool little effects that you can use to enhance your photos. So again, I would go ahead and hit control and click. 
go up to edit in and I'm gonna go down to Luminar Neo and then again, select whichever box you want here. Go ahead and hit edit. I already have it loaded in Luminar Neo here. Here it is. So the way that Luminar Neo works is it's essentially a full service editor. You can use it to completely edit your photo if you want. I like just using it as a plugin because I do like editing in Lightroom. But the way that you use it as a plugin, it has a couple really awesome uh, creative features here that we can use. Again, you can use this as a standalone editor if you don't have Lightroom or don't want to use Lightroom. But if you do use Lightroom, you already know the Lightroom workflow. You don't want to learn another workflow. Just get the plugin for this and it works really, really well. So what I like doing is going down into the creative tab here. And the first thing I like to do is add sun rays. Now this doesn't work on every photo, but it does work on a lot of photos. So I click place sun center and then I increase the amount and then I drag the sun. Now you obviously want to put the sun where the sun was in the photo to begin with, which is like right here. And of course, remember that as we're doing this, we're faking it, but we're essentially trying to create a little bit better light. So this is not for everybody, but for those of you that do like doing this kind of thing, uh, I find this tool to work really well. I'm gonna adjust the penetration so that it's not hitting the foreground here. And then you have a bunch of different settings that you can apply to make this more or less uh, visible. And you can adjust the overall look. You can decrease the overall uh, sun ray length here, which looks nice. We can increase the sun radius. There's a ton of different things you can do, um, and it's really totally up to you. But I'm just kind of showing you the quick and easy here. Um, and then you can go ahead and adjust the number of sun rays if you want more or less. And you can randomize it just to get a little different look going on here and you just keep sliding this until you see one you like, basically. I think that one's looking pretty good for me, so we can toggle the before and the after. So we just added a little bit of sun rays that added some interest to the scene. So I like using sun rays, and then the other one that I like using here in uh, Luminar Neo is I like using the glow. This allows you to create an Orton effect, which is really, really nice. You may have heard of the Orton effect before. There's no way to apply it in Lightroom. You have to go into Photoshop to do it, but if you have this plugin, you can easily just apply the Orton effect here. And you just click Orton effect, do the amount, and then it loads just like that. Now, if it's affecting parts of your image you don't want to affect, you can also add a mask, and then you can paint a mask on so you can paint this out of certain areas of the image if that's what you want to do. Uh, in this photo, it doesn't really make sense to do that, but that is an option that you can use to paint a mask. Um, there's a few other cool tools. Mystical can be kind of nice on here, um, just to add, I guess, a mystical glow. I don't really know how to explain what this one does, but you would just have to try it. And then you can see kind of how it works. Um, and honestly, there's not a lot of other great ones that I really like. Uh, dramatic can sometimes work with just a little bit, but you can see it works in pretty quickly. So a few great little filters here that you can use. There's also some portrait stuff if you guys are portrait photographers. Um, and of course you can go up into the essentials and do some regular editing as well. So I think that's looking good. You guys can see here, I do a little stuff in Luminar Neo that I think does look really nice. It's definitely worth the money to be able to create these sun rays, create that Orton effect if you don't know how to use Photoshop. Really, really helpful and simple to use. All right guys, so let's talk about photos that are a little bit noisy. You can see here when I zoom in, this is a night photo shot at ISO 6400. It is very, very, very noisy. Um, and there's a few different denoising softwares out there. I'm gonna show you guys the best one in my opinion. Um, and so again, the way we're gonna launch that, control click, we're gonna go to edit in, we're gonna go down to Topaz Denoise AI. Now, if you guys have been watching my YouTube video for a while, or my YouTube channel, you guys have probably seen that I've used this quite a bit. I really, really like this uh, Topaz Denoise. I think it works incredibly well. Uh, and on this photo, you can see it is no different. So this is gonna work pretty similar to how Topaz Sharpen does. I'm just gonna check the automatic here for the AI model and do the same thing for model preferences. I'm gonna let it choose all its own settings. The only time that I choose my own settings is when it doesn't do a very good job. And to be honest with you, I don't know if that's really ever happened. It pretty much always does a great job. But if you are nitpicky, you can go in and adjust these settings as well. Uh, same thing, you're just gonna slide this bar left 
and right. And on the left is before and on the right of the bar is after. So you can see how that affects the image. Honestly, it's looking really, really, really good. And you can just go ahead and hit apply. If you guys wanna see how to use Topaz Denoise in a little bit more detail, I do have another video on my channel where I talk a lot more about diving deep into it and really using it uh, to really, really help reduce the noise on your images. But for the sake of this video, that's all I'm gonna cover on Topaz Denoise. All right, guys, the last plugin that I'm going to show you here is one that you're going to use after you're done editing your image. This is great for those of you that might want to print your image. So you've got this photo here, and I've shot it at 60 megapixels on my Sony a7R 4 but let's say that I shot it maybe on my iPhone or maybe I was using my uh, Sony a6300. I, I've only got 20 megapixels. The file's really small, but I want to print a really large print for a client, a family member, a friend, whatever. Um, so you're not going to be able to print this very well. When you print it large, it's going to look very grainy and like pixelated. So we need to upsize it. Now there's a lot of different ways to upsize it. I'm going to show you guys in my opinion, the best one. We're going to control click here. We're going to go up to edit in and we are going to go down to on one resize AI 2022. Uh, and then we can go ahead that will load it right into on one resize here. This is what it's going to look like. Um, and I'll show you guys how I go about resizing this. So we can go up to photo size and I'm gonna do it in inches here. Change it to inches because if you're resizing for print, you want inches. Now, if you're trying to resize for like web or something, you can use pixels, but honestly, there's a lot easier ways to do that than this. I really just use this for resizing prints. And if you guys aren't in the United States and you're in one of the pretty much any other country in the world that uses metric system, you can do centimeters or millimeters if that makes more sense to you. I'm gonna do inches though because that is what makes sense to me. So right now you can see the image is sitting at 21.12 by 31.68. Let's say that we wanted to upsize this to, let's just do 45 inches wide it's gonna, once I put in 45, it's gonna automatically change the height to 30. Uh, and now I can go down to sharpening. I'm gonna check the sharpening box. I'm going, uh, you can click print if you want. A lot of times I'll click print um, and that will change the type here to progressive and then a few options here. Now what I like to do is I like to zoom in on the image to 100. By zooming into 100, that's gonna show me how my image looks at the size I'm gonna be printing at. So if you guys can imagine here, I'm only seeing a portion of this, but imagine that I was using a 30 by 45 inch screen, I would be able to see the whole image when I'm at 100. 100 just shows you the like real size of the image. So what you wanna do is back up away from your screen, look at this like you're looking at it on the wall, and you can see it's a little bit over sharpened. So I'm gonna increase the threshold a little bit, and that basically just changes the threshold of what is getting sharpened. Usually I like this around five or so. And then I can adjust a few other sliders here. I'm gonna maybe bring the detail up and the amount down. And let's toggle this. And I don't wanna overdo anything here. I just wanna make my image sharp enough so that it looks nice as a print. And it was already sharpened, so you can see it's already looking pretty good. I think this is looking nice. We'll go back out to fit. Um, and now you can go down. There's a couple other things that you can do here. You can protect the shadows and highlights or skin. Essentially that protects the, high, the darkest shadows, the brightest highlights or skin tones from being sharpened because those are the things in your photos in a print that you don't want to be sharpened because it's not gonna look good. So you can use that if you would like. In this photo, there's nothing that I think needs to be protected. So I'm not going to use it. You've got a couple other options down here. I don't use any of these. At this point, I would just go ahead and hit export. And then when you hit export, you're gonna get a dialog box and you can go ahead and adjust your settings, uh, change the file type, whatever you needed to do, and then export it out, send it straight to your printer. That I think is the best way to resize your photo. Now you can resize your photo in Lightroom, but it doesn't have these options for sharpening and it doesn't do as good of a job sharpening. Um, and upsizing as on one resize AI in my opinion. Alrighty guys, that is a wrap. Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's video. Hopefully it was helpful for you guys and hopefully you found a couple new plugins that you're really, really going to like and enjoy and that you can pick up. If you guys have any questions about any of these plugins, please feel free to drop them down below in the comments. I'm happy to hear from you guys, happy to answer those questions and always happy to hear if the plugins worked well for you. Thank you guys so much for checking out this week's video. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.